I'd love to know where your thoughts are and your feelings are on where this country is actually headed. Mm. I know that you're trying to be a voice to heal us and bring us together, but are we close to a point of no return? Mm. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a great question. And, and thankfully all I have is speculation. So where we get really, it gets really, really scary uh, are two places. And, and number one is violence. So our country, our government, one of the best things our government ever did was create laws so they had a monopoly of, on violence. So the only one who can legally commit violence in very, very narrow ways is the United States. Uh, they can do that through uh, the, the, the military uh, and or can do so through law enforcement. And the reason that's such a good idea is that we as human beings are incredibly incredibly vengeful. So there's a reason why they call it a cycle of violence or a cycle of vengeance. Because Justin, if you hurt me, I'm going to come back and hurt you harder. And then you hurt me harder. And before you know it, we're, it blows. We instantly will ratchet up the violence. So any acts of violence, which we will see uh, in the coming years, there's it's bubbling up beneath the surface. Uh, and I don't know what's going to happen there, but violence is not a solution. It does not help. You will not win your side. And if you look at any of the, the institution, any of the people who committed violence, the Taliban in 2001 did it further their cause. I'm sorry, the Taliban and uh, Al Qaeda in 2001 did it further their cause. No, nope. uh, the 1993, 1996 Oklahoma bomber did his violence to help him. Oh. The people who uh, committed blew up abortion clinics back in the early 90s. Did any of those those causes get furthered by violence. No, it never works <laughs> ever. It makes us feel it's going to work. It does not work. So violence is the one thing that I worry about. Uh, and the second thing I worry about is elections. So if we have the, the, the only thing that's, you know, so be, having a free, fair and accountable election is incredibly important. And if we continue down this path where we're voting and we don't trust the outcome of our elections, that's where things get really bad because ultimately we are in um, this democracy because we trust our elections that the people who are in power are in power. I mean, <laughs> democracy is the worst form of government only compared to, except when compared to all the others. No, right. so, <laughs> They're all terrible. I was going to say, well, whoa, what's, what's better? I don't know. Right. There's, there's, you know. The only thing that's better is if I have all the power. And I mean, that me. So Peter, that is the only system of, 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 that's better than democracy is I have all the power. And you're looking at me going, well, Peter, I, I don't, that's not better for me. Okay. <laughs> then the next best thing is no one, no one person has all the power. We have all the power. So democracy where we agree and believe in our free and fair elections that are accountable, if we stop believing in those, that would be the end of our country. Uh, it isn't that we don't have borders. It does, isn't that we don't have a court system. It, the, the, the capstone of our democracy is believe, having free and fair accountable elections that we believe in. And if we stop having that, that's when we start seeing the fall of our country. Yeah, no, I agree. And I mean, I'm, I, unfortunately I'm seeing it more and more with every passing election. Um, you know, and you go back to the Declaration of Independence and what this country was founded on is it dated? Sure, it's dated. It was written a long, long time ago. Um, but at the same time, you know, the we the people. Right. And, and when we're not being served, we must do we must come together and do something about it. I'm paraphrasing. That's how they would have said it in 2021. Um, but with that being said, um, I think you're, you're spot on. It's terrifying and we have to we have to make a change. And so I do want to ask you about one more thing, which is I, I've noticed an uptick in division and judgment and hate and all the things when COVID became a part of this entire landscape. And I don't want to get into conspiracy theories of where it came from and why it hatched and all the things, but they're certainly using it as a tool mm -hmm. to divide us. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're, this is just out of my own damn curiosity. Um, do you think they're purposely using it as a tool or do they, do you think that they both think that they have, they are right with what they're saying? Yes. So we say both. I mean, there's not only they're both are political parties, they're just political actors, there's media, there's media personalities, and they will use anything that will get them attention as a way of division. So at any time they can say the other side is crazy. The other side is wrong. The other side is trying to take something away from you 
whether it be your freedom or your ability to choose or your physical safety. They're basically taking the credibility and trust that you may have had for the other, other organization and they're heaping it onto themselves. Hmm. So they are using fear mongering as a way of getting more attention to either get more followers, sell more advertising and exploit. They are exploiting the situation for their own benefit. And I will not consume any media that vilifies another American or another American group, period. End of story. Yeah. So where do you go for your, for your news? Cause I, I like, I, I, I try my best to um, do the same, but, but I find myself, you know, b- both. And again, I, it doesn't make me feel a certain way. Cause I'm sure if, I, but I'm sure if I stayed down that lane, I'd feel a certain way. So where do you go to, to find your news? That's a great question. Uh, I don't, I don't consume any news. So I stopped consuming any news uh, back in January and I couldn't be happier. And so people say, well, Peter, how do you stay informed? Well, it turns out the more news you concern you consume, and this has been shown in study after study after study, the more news you consume, the more misinformed you are, not informed, mm-hmm. misinformed you are. So I don't consume any news. Uh, and I still, I mean, you also got to consider what's news. And the only thing that's news to me are th- things that are actually in my area of control <laughs> or things that help me make better decisions. So what is news to me on a given day? Uh, the weather, sometimes the traffic. Um, if anybody uh, is going to attack, like you know, there was an invading army or maybe there was a riot, that would be news to me because it would help me make a better decision. Um, what, what, I mean, what else? The pandemic, what was news to me? No one wanted, you know, should wear a mask. Or that, that was news to me. It was information that I could use. And if you take away everything that's not that, that is the majority of what people think is news. It's not news. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it is news, but it's not really news to you. It doesn't help you change the decisions you make. So people tell me those things. They do. I mean, if it's really important, they say, hey, did you hear that Afghanistan fell and the Taliban took over? And I go, great. My whole goal is I want to be informed, not influenced. Uh, I now know that Afghanistan fell. It's as awful, by the way, horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, But probably in a month or two, um, I will find a a long um, form article on it or a long video that's been written two or three months afterwards that will actually go in depth and explain what happened. But I'll wait for the retrospective two or three months from now. So I know the headline, Afghanistan fell. There's nothing I can do about it. Really, I guess I could send some money to the American Red Cross. It'll probably be a Doctors Without Borders who will probably be taking care of refugees. But, but beyond that, you know, whose fault is it? I have, I have no interest in that conversation. Yeah. I don't Does, care. Does it matter? Does it matter? <laughs> so people who care go, well, yeah, it means I'm going to vote for this party. Great. Uh, you can know that without being frothy about it, without knowing spending five hours or 10 hours in front of the TV. So the answer is uh, I will read about it probably or watch a documentary about it in probably six months and find out what was the understory that usually will interview the inside players, the generals, the policymakers in Afghan, they'll oftentimes even interview the actual Taliban. So somebody will, and they'll post that in six months or maybe a year. So, or I'll read a book, but most of the stuff people call news, it's not news. I can get the weather off an app on my phone. If you are more committed to national unity than partisanship, please check out my book, The Second Civil War, A Citizen's Guide to Healing Our Fractured Nation. My book will challenge you to improve your relationships with friends and family. Click the link in the description below.